Hey guys, welcome to part two of our server build. Um, so from here, we're actually doing uh, <clears throat> our password uh, authentication. So put a us our username as administrator, that's default, can't change that. Um, again, from the previous video, if you had watched that, you'll know that if you are using a uh, custom build, then that administrator account could be different things. But for the sake of just bouncing off the ISO file, just to do the installation of the operating system, administrator is gonna be your default. Um, your password has to meet the minimum password policy uh, built into Windows, which I believe is eight characters, um, and it should contain one special and one number. Um, so as long as you meet that minimum, password should work. Uh, so once you have the password in, put it in twice. Make sure you enter it in manually. Don't type it in. You know, don't use like an autofill or something like that or paste it because if it pastes weird, uh, you in essence will lock yourself out or have to do this over again. Um, click finish. It's going to finalize your settings and it's going to get you to the logon page. At this point, you're going to have to uh, control alt delete to actually get into the system. Again, this is virtual, so we'll send the control alt delete. Um, now we're going to log into it. Okay, so now we're logged into the server. Um, for this, I'm going to actually choose no. You could choose yes if you're on a, if you're on a private domain, if you're on a LAN, and you do want the system to be discovery, discovered, you want auto discover turned on, um, you could do that. Um, it's not necessary for the sake of a domain controller. Uh, that, that's, it's slightly different. Um, in essence, you really only want to do that um, if you need auto discover turned on. Uh, quite frankly, most infrastructures, I would suggest not doing it because of the ransomware concerns. Um, at any rate, so we're gonna, first thing we're gonna do is gonna check this, don't show this message again. Uh, it's not necessary. Next thing I'm gonna do is go to manage, go to server manager properties and choose the don't serve this, don't start the server manager automatically at logon. Um, and we're gonna close that out. So now that we have this new operating system built, um, something you're gonna see here is your time. Uh, I'm on the Eastern, uh, uh, Eastern Standard Time. If I go into the time here and I try to change this, it will not work. There's a bug in Windows 2019 and 22 server. It doesn't exist in all builds, but it's in most of them. So what we're going to want to do is the first thing is we'll open up a command prompt. Um, generally, I'm going to pin that to start first so I have it handy, but what we're going to do is going to open command prompt as administrator. Um, and we're going to type in time date dot cpl and hit the enter key. This is gonna open up your uh, time and date settings for your control panel as admin through the control panel. Um, at that point, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna to change the time zone, click the drop down for the time zone that you're in. Again, I'm in the Eastern Standard Time, so I click OK, click OK, and adjust my time. Um, if you don't do it this way, you try to go through regular control panel, it'll tell you don't have permissions. If you try to change it through the uh, through the uh, test bar, it'll tell you don't have permissions. It's a bug that's really existed since 2016 that they never fixed. Um, I assume there's probably updates that do fix it, but we don't have the updates right now. We're on a uh, base install. So the first thing we're actually gonna do is install the updates. Um, now you could do it the old fashioned way, just and by old fashioned, it was really not that old fashioned because they added settings, right? So settings, um, and then going through the setting console and going to updates and security and running Windows updates that way. However, I'm going to show an easier way to do it. In the server operating system, you get a command. Uh, so you're going to run CMD again as admin if you've closed the box. If not, in here, you're going to type in sconfig. And that's going to open up the server configuration manager. And in here, number six. And then we're going to do A for all. So we're gonna search for all updates. And what this is gonna do now is it's gonna download the updates through the command line. This is a lot faster than downloading the updates through the GUI. So you could really install all of the server 2019 updates on a decent internet connection in about 30 minutes. Whereas if you use the GUI, uh, you could be there for half the day. Um, this does require Visual Basic. So if you have a script or something on a pre-existing domain that uh, kills out VBS, or you've added the server already to the domain, or you're just looking at this video and saying, you know, what if there, what are some additional tips I could do for a server configuration? Um, having Visual Basic disabled will uh, render this uh, not usable. So you want to make sure you enable Visual Basic uh, again if you decide.
that you want to run the sconfig. Um, so now that we have the sconfig ran, we're going to choose A for all, and it's going to download and install the updates. And once it's finished, you'll get a pop-up on the screen that'll indicate it's time to restart the computer. I'm going to stop this video here, and I will pick up with uh, part three once all the updates finish on this server. Um, so like and subscribe for more videos. Hopefully you're enjoying the series so far, and uh, I'll see you guys soon.